the member from Windsor West. I should rise today as a representative of Windsor West and speak to Bill 49, the Ontario Immigration Act. I want to thank all of those who spoke before me on this bill, especially our immigration critic. I think she's doing an outstanding job on this portfolio, as well as raising the concerns of her constituents from London Fanshawe. I'm thankful to have the opportunity to debate this bill today. I know this government has been making a bit of a habit of cutting debate time in this chamber, and I've waited patiently all week hoping that I would have the opportunity to speak to this bill today. Given recent actions by this government to stifle important debate, I know we all get excited when they allow us the opportunity to speak to important, in many cases life-altering legislation in this chamber without cutting off our ability to debate things democratically and passionately in this chamber. After 10 years without a comprehensive immigration policy for this province, I'm glad we are hearing, here, I'm glad we are here debating this bill. Broadly speaking, this bill, as several of my colleagues have indicated, provides the authority for Ontario to establish and govern immigrant selection programs. If passed, the bill would empower the province to set target levels of the number of persons chosen by selection programs and give consideration to Ontario's labour market needs. It would, it would also allow the Minister to pursue regulations that can set up registries for both employers and recruiters interested in participating in Ontario selection programs under the Act. This, of course, is not an exhaustive list of what the Bill hopes to accomplish, but I think that what I've outlined is sufficient given that my time is limited this morning. To add some context to this debate, I would like to bring up a few points that were already raised, but I think they are worth bringing up again. Immigration in this province would need to be more than two and a half times greater than it is today in order to offset the decline in Ontario's labour force being caused by our ageing population. Let's unpack this for a minute. Besides the productivity losses that we may face, we need to consider all of the knowledge that will be lost if we don't effectively pass it along to our next generation of workers, which includes Ontario immigrants as well as young people. I'm thinking specifically of auto workers and the tool and die makers that are foundational to the success of Windsor and Essex County. These are craftspeople. They employ skills that cannot be learned overnight and a lot of the time require extensive on-the-job training. Utilizing the skills of our current workforce to train those who will take over for them is something we need to think seriously about. If the people that will take over these jobs have not, been enter have not even entered this province yet, we need to get them here and we need to set up one, our on-the-job training programs so that Ontario shares its knowledge with the next generation of workers. We also need to remember that a number of Ontario immigrants already have the skills they need to be employed in this province. Bill 49 speaks to recruiting and targeting highly trained and employable individuals in Ontario. This initiative is only as good as our ability to recognize their skills. We've heard this before, it's not new, and the government has been aware of this trend for over a decade. Yet, for over 10 years, we've not seen this government come forward and commit to an Ontario immigration plan. I'm glad that finally we are seeing something today. I think that one thing that's not in this bill, and this issue was touched on by a number of my colleagues, is a focus on immigra immigrants that do not fit into the economic class being discussed in this bill. Furthermore, adequate housing is not addressed in this bill. All of the concerns I've raised thus far are concerns in my community. Windsor welcomes a large number of new Ontarians every year. Unfortunately, over the past few years, we've also lost a number of Windsorites to the western provinces. I hope that we can build the, the economy required to welcome them back one day and reconnect families. Nevertheless, I'm glad to welcome new families to our great city every year. We have people coming from all over the world to live in our community and continue to develop the cultural institutions that allow people to enjoy their unique, unique cultural practices and share them with others. I would like to specifically highlight the excellent work done by the Somali community in Windsor. This community organization service, services all residents it specializes in offering social services targeted to at-risk, marginalized communities in the region. Specifically, residents originating from Somalia or those of Somali heritage. This is, not, this is a not-for-profit organization of staff and volunteers that works tirelessly in my community. Most recently, the Somali community of Windsor informed me about a project to target Somali youth who have escalating problems of school discipline 
or are suffering from low self-esteem or delinquency. The program seeks to establish a mechanism for early forms of intervention to help at-risk youth succeed in the community. Programming includes, a workshop, includes workshop sessions on enhancing social skills and building linkages to provide youth with mentors and support networks. Speaker, I've met with this community several times since being elected and they are motivated, organized and dedicated. I don't think I will ever forget the lessons I'm learning about community activism and engagement from this organization. I really hope this government is taking note of my remarks here as the Somali Communities Program is not yet implemented and is an excellent model to be implemented and duplicated elsewhere. I hope the government looks at these programs when they are designing the criteria of what would qualify for settlement services and I hope they provide specifics very soon. I brought up the Somali community and their work on community programming today because I think it underscores a number of issues yet to be determined in the Ontario Immigration Act. While the goal of bringing more people into Ontario is admirable and needed, we need to look at what support network we have for these people once they come to our province. We need to assess whether or not those that come here to work have access to affordable housing. We need to look at targeted programming for at-risk youth and how the need for this programming is intensified when we are talking about minority populations. Rest assured, I can speak until adjournment and beyond about the ambitions and achievements of all of the cultural institutions in my riding and all of the culture we celebrate in Windsor and Essex County. But somehow, I don't think you would allow me to do that, Mr. Speaker, even though I know all the members of this chamber would enjoy the discussion. Maybe indulge me one last time by allowing me to highlight one more group and that I'll bring up the rest at a later date. I want to highlight the work being done by the Essex County Chinese Canadian Association. Chinese Canadians have a proud tradition in Windsor, and I'm sure we all remember that there was a time in Canada that if you were Chinese, you were not allowed to immigrate to the country. We can all recall this dark chapter of Canadian history that saw the Chinese Immigration Act in effect from 1923 to 1947. The Essex County Chinese Associ Association has held events in the past cele celebrating the repeal of this truly discriminatory legislation. I think remembering how tragic immigration legislation was in the past helps us ground us in how far we have come and how far we have yet to go when legislating immigration policy in Ontario. And I thank the Essex County Chinese Canadian Association for reminding us of this. I think my time is coming to an end, Speaker, and I would like to say that I enjoyed my time speaking to this bill today. While I'm glad to see that we are, we are in discussion, we're having a discussion focused on immigration policy for Ontario, I know I'm not alone in thinking we should have some sort of comprehensive immigration plan over a decade ago. Nevertheless, I hope moving forward the government will reflect on my remarks. First and foremost, I hope they look at the work being done by organi organizations in my riding that ease the transition for people new to Ontario, remind us of our past, and work to build a more inclusive and thriving Ontario. And Speaker, this, this bill is, is uh, incredibly significant to my riding as um, I'm Windsor is a border town, and in my riding alone there are two border crossings, whether that's through the tunnel over into Detroit or across the bridge, and hopefully very soon um, a new publicly owned uh, bridge as well. And um, more and more I see that immigrants come across with incredible skills uh, that are not transferable. We need to make sure that they have supports in place that when they come here, those skills can, they can use to be put to work right away. And, uh, and that we're able to su support their communities. I mentioned the Somali community in my speech, um, and uh, they're currently looking to relocate facilities because they just don't have the, the funding in place to, to run their fantastic program. These are things that we need to look at when we welcome people into, uh, into the country and into Ontario and make sure that they have the supports in place specific to their cultural uh, needs and we need to make sure that the, the youth that they bring with them are supported uh, so that when they grow up and, and, and they go through our education system and they grow up and move on to work that there are, are jobs out there for them and they have the skills that they need in order to succeed. Um, and I think that's just about it for my time, Speaker, so thank you. Thank you very much.